Hi, yeah, you are audible. And over to you, Hajra. I think all of them are yeah. able to see the screen. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. If you want to read in more detail about my profile, I have also attached a link to my LinkedIn as well. So moving on to the most important part of the presentation is what actually Helmut Schmidt Tart Scholarship is. So next slide, please. Yeah, so Helmut Schmidt uh, is also known as a public policy and good governance scholarship program. The main, the key words in this scholarship is public policy and good governance. So if you think your profile is more uh, res is resonating with the, these two words, then I would say this scholarship program is for you. Um, the basic aim and objective of this scholarship is that it supports future leaders and uh, from developing countries. So the reason why I highlighted developing countries is because a lot of people have been messaging me and asking if Pakistan is eligible for this scholarship or not. When we talk about developing countries, Pakistan makes it to the top of the list. So yes, Pakistan absolutely is eligible for this scholarship. So you guys, all of you are eligible to apply for this scholarship and um, Oh, um, moving on towards the objective, it also uh, talks about promoting democracy and social justice in your home countries. So if you have a passion of uh, working towards the democracy side or social justice, uh, then I would say that this scholarship is actually a very good one. And the program is funded by the German Federal Foreign Office. It offers a chance uh, to, uh, for us to acquire a master's degree in different programs. I'll also, I have also listed down a few of the uh, programs as well in the upcoming slides, so I'll talk further in detail about that. Uh, for now, the, what the scholarships get, uh, what the scholar, scholarship holders get from this scholarship is that they, uh, the scholarship is um, 934 euros per month. You also get health insurance. Uh, you also get travel allowance from your home country to Germany, uh, study and research grant and rent subsidies. And one of the most important point is that you don't have to have any prior language um, um, knowledge regarding the German language. Um, you only need to have your IELTS or TOEFL for you to qualify or to or to be able to apply for this scholarship. Right now, you don't have to worry about your German language because um, the reason why DART scholarship is important is because they give you the opportunity to learn for six months the German language course, which I think is um, really, really important. And it really helps you while you're living here in Germany with zero knowledge. So moving on to the next slide. Yes, yeah, so these are the master courses that this scholarship, particularly this scholarship covers. The Helmut Schmidt, uh, number one is the social protection. Um, this is a master's program uh, which, is, uh, which is being done in Bonn, Bonn Rhein's, uh, Rhein Zeig. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. So it has like four semesters. It's a blended learning concept. It's um, the teaching language is in English. So um, some of the languages, um, some of the universities have bilingual, like they also teach in German and English. So you have to be sure to, you know, select the language that suits with you the best. So at first we have social protection, second development and governance from University of Duisburg. Third is public policy, Willy Brandt. We all, we all know how uh, important that, that university is for public policy. Fourth is peace and conflict studies. Fifth is management in nonprofit from um, Osnabrück University. Sixth is development studies and seventh is governance and public policy. That is my, my master's program as well. So uh, these seven master courses are a part of this scholarship program. And um, it also like, for example, I would like to also stress upon the point that if you have, uh, um, if you have like uh, you want to further your studies in public policy or you have a passion for public policy, then I would suggest you go for a, a Willy Brandt public policy rather than going towards any other field or maybe like governance and public policy, because then it would have two different concepts there. But if if you specifically want to, uh, want to study like the public policy, then Willy Brandt is the perfect school for that. And secondly, development studies is also being done in University of Passau and um, uh, governance and public policy. So University of Passau has like two programs in this scholarship. So yeah, next slide. So moving on towards the most important point, that is the application process. Um, why I highlighted the first point is that you have you have the chance to apply to two master courses. While you're writing your letter of motivation, you get to choose two different master courses from two different universities. Like for example, if you want to uh, pursue Willy Brandt 
as your first choice and for second choice you can go with any other university like university of passau or university of duisburg so what it helps with them uh, what it helps why it helps you is that if you're not able to get selected for your first priority they will uh, also consider your second priority um, because the same thing happened with me i selected willy brent as my first priority and university of passau was my second so i made it to my second priority so that's how it helps you and uh, moving further um, the dart selection criteria and so all of these points have been extracted from the um, checklist that that is being provided by the dart scholarship uh, dart program so i would suggest you guys should definitely check out the uh, dart website other than that i've listed the most important points um, yes, so the second point uh, states that the please tick off the checklist and complete list of criteria with your original signature. So I want to highlight this point is wherever it says that you have to list your original signature, you have to print out the document and you have to um, sign it manually like not you don't insert your scanned signature or or any digital signatures, please print the document and make your um, signatures manually and indicating your place and exact date at the time you're signing that document. And the third point is that um, the application form. So the application for research study scholarship uh, in which you can indicate that you're you have selected the first as uh, as your first priority or the second and why the reason for that because um, you have to rank your courses in order of preference in your motivation letter. Your first choice needs to clearly indicate why your first choice is your first choice. You have to highlight certain points, like for example, if you're going as um, for Willy Brent as your first choice, you have to mention that why is the reason why you want to pursue it or keep it as your first priority. And uh, for your second point, uh, uh, for each choice, you know, you, you just provide clear reasons why you think it will advance you academically and professionally. So and one thing is that you submit the both universities, so you don't write any other letter for Willy Brandt or any other letter, for example, for University of Passau. For both your master courses, you uh, you attach the same letter of motivation on the same portal. Next point is that um, you have to um, submit the application form to master courses of your choices, maximum two, along with the required documents. So uh, the required documents I have attached in the next slide. I'll talk about them in the further the further detail. And this uh, point talks about scho scholarship applications must be made directly to the master courses. So this point is very, very important because I have been getting a lot of um, people telling me that, you know, whether we have to apply to the DART portal or we have to apply to the universities at first you only apply to the master's scholarship uh, universities program. You don't go directly to the DART portal or anywhere else. You just go to the universities you want to apply to and you apply to their portal. You don't have to look for or go to DART portal. Yeah, so I'll talk about it in detail in my next slides. Next slide, please. Yeah, so how to apply on universities portal. So this talks about the required documents, what documents you need to have uh, on the basis of which your scholarship, uh, your uh, application will be deemed, you know, necessary. So um, the you have to, they they also provide a checklist you have to um, and i think when you look at the checklist it helps you in a lot of areas because you then get to understand about the criteria what you need to have like the uh, dart application form a single letter of motivation so um, i'll stop here and talk about the letter of motivation so in letter of motivation you have to talk about your academic professional and personal reasons as to why you want to uh, apply to this scholarship program, because this is the one major point. Um, we recently had our um, meeting with the coordinator of DART, and she was telling me that she received for this program, she received around 1300 scholar uh, applications and only 500 were complete completely you know filled up because some people tend to for, uh, forget one or two points but in while you're applying for such scholarships you need to make sure that you you know you're like applying to you're taking off your every point in letter of motivation i would suggest that you talk um, you know you write such keywords that will help the consortium understand that you have you know you have read the whole application or you have read whole documents in detail what this scholarship is all about so it is very important that you use the keywords and um, 
again, I would say that you, know, you have to indicate why you, your first choice of master's course is your first choice and why your second choice is your second choice. And one of the very important thing is that if you have two different programs, you have to write two different letters of motivation. You have to write two different letters of motivation. You have to attach one letter of motivation to both of them. You have to upload it in both of them. And next is a curriculum with I in reverse chronological order. Please do not attach your normal CV to this. Yeah, um, Dad really stresses upon this point that you have to upload your CV in Europass format. And for that, it is also attached on their uh, website as well. Europass is very simple. You just upload your curriculum with I in reverse chrono uh, chronological order. And without uh, and one thing, you have to explain your gaps. Like, for example, if you did uh, an internship somewhere and for one month you didn't do anything, so you have to explain, like, made a comment. Um, make a little comment in your CV that you know that this is the reason why you didn't because uh, like I was working with Oxfam and for one month I didn't work anywhere so I write I wrote there I mentioned a point that you know because um, you and have their um, whole process profile checking and because of that I didn't do work here so you know it is very important that you keep in mind every point that they are asking you like go in detail and um, next is that you have your copies of higher education commission degree certificate uh, higher education degree certificates and um, please make sure they are um, attested please do not upload without attestation and um, your full set of records uh, like transcripts your professional experience or internships aapke internships ke jitne bhi certificates hain jitne bhi aapke volunteer ke certificates hain jidhar bhi aapne jo jo bhi um, uh, volunteer kiya hai uske aapne certificates ki स्कैन करके उसको अटैच करें एंड अदर देन दैट यस प्रूफ ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज स्किल्स यस प्रूफ ऑफ इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज स्किल्स आप सकते दैट विल नॉट हेल्प यू एट ऑल आइल्स एंड टोफल इज कंपलसरी and next is a current uh, written reference from your current employer or from a university lecturer uh, for example agar aap abhi recent graduate hain and you don't have you don't you think ke aapka koi bhi abhi recently um, current employer nahi hai to aap apne teacher se keh sakte hain university lecturer se keh sakte hain um, she can write about your um, you know skill and it has to be on a headed paper like university's headed paper and not scanned she has to sign it she or he has to sign it digital signature and date of issue and stamp is important so yes moving on to the next slide yeah selection criteria so uh, how they uh, select the different um, how do how the consortium goes through your application what are the important points so what they focus on is that uh, your academic professional and personal motivation how it aligns with um, what you have prioritized like for example if i have done my bachelor's in social sciences and my first priority is willy brent or um, university of pasau then you have to you know like make sure that in your letter of motivation it also explains why you want to go through that because uh, you're going from social sciences towards specifically public policy so why public policy that's what you have to explain explain your practical experience like you have worked for ngos you have worked in any political activity or internships um, they also you know measure that as well a uh, first higher education uh, uh, obviously your university degree all masters courses have their own selection criteria so all the universities have have their own consortium they sit together and they um, you know go through whole applications and then they pass your application to the dart like if first they shortlist they send out calls for the interviews and if you made it to the list and if you're selected then you will receive an email from the dart that you have been you know shortlisted for this and then after that you start applying towards the dart so that process comes later after your interview but first you just have to focus on your application and in applying towards the masters um, universities program next slide yes so this is the processing date you uh, the selection will be made in october november and it comprises of different professors masters courses and representatives of dart so and different people 
people sit together and they just you know go through your application and candidates that were proposed for a scholarship are contacted by dad and they ask you further if you haven't uh, fulfilled some of the documents they ask you to upload certain documents again to the portal and um, please make sure that, that you have a full set of your copy, copies in PDF format at all times. You should just make a um, separate folder in which you have all of your documents with you. And yes, um, uh, at the end of the selection process, um, uh, in mid or late December, you just uh, hear from them again if you have been finalized or not. So next slide. And these are the important points that you have to submit your documents uh, to the DART scholarship uh, of your choice and not to the DART. Please, uh, you have to submit to the master's universities you're applying to and not go to the DART application portal or anywhere. And secondly, again, they're just talking about how you have to make sure that you, all of your documents are legible, like they are also attested from the, your higher education commission and you are not uh, you know, forging anything. Everything is legal. So that's what it talks about. Next. And yeah, that's the conclusion of it. And I added a quote by Lama Iqbal that Manzil se aage badkar manzil ko talash kar, mil jaye tujko darya to samandar ko talash kar. So yeah, that's it. And this is the application deadline. This whole month you should just focus on your application and go through, write again and again, draft again and again your letter of motivation. And inshallah, if it's written for you, you will get it. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Khadija. Thank you. So do we have any questions? Thank you so much, Hajra, for this explicit session. Bohoti zada detail mein aapne jo hai point to point. Yeah. Uh, isko explain kar diya and I'm pretty sure uh, humare jitne bhi participants hain, they must have gotten the idea that how they should start to apply. And now we would move forward to the Q&A session and I would start with Zamina, then we'll move towards to Lina, then Haru. Okay, Zamina. Uh, thank you so much for such a good session. Um, my question is that you mentioned we have to mention our gap years. So I took a gap year after metric before going into FSC. So do I have to mention that too? Yes, uh, while you're uh, making your CV in Europass, I think you should like make a comment in your education folder, like in your education section of the CV that, you know, the reason why you uh, took a gap year or while you were focusing on something else or while you, at that time you were working uh, with some other organization, you can mention that point because uh, um, I think explanation helps you a lot in this. So as as far as more explain, more simplified your application is, it will help the consortium and your yourself as well. So I don't really have a question. I just want to add something upon what Hajra has already very well um, elaborated. Um, I don't know if she mentioned this before, but I just want to highlight a fact. If one of the colleagues here or one of the students here already has a master's degree from their home country, they may feel discouraged to really apply for such a scholarship. They're going to feel like, hey, I already have a master's. They'll probably not select my application and so on and so forth. I just want to say that this was one of my biggest fears since I already have a master's degree from um, yeah, my country. And while applying to this scholarship, I was like, hey, most probably they're not going to select it. Uh, I mean, other people are much more advantaged to receive a scholarship if they don't have a master's. So I just really want to encourage everyone here, if you do have a master's degree, please still give it a, give it a shot, apply. It's very, very different from um, the learning methods you have received in your country. And they do encourage students who want to try a new learning experience in Germany. Yeah, but you really need to, um, let's say, develop good arguments on why they would finance your second master's degree in Germany. Yeah, once this is done, when this is well highlighted in your motivation letter, why you would like to, yeah, study a second master's degree in Germany, then they would give you the scholarship if they see you have what it takes, um, yeah, for a second master's. So this was the first point. And the second point, I would really like to highlight the importance of focusing and writing a good motivation letter. Um, you know, just like Hajra mentioned, you have a checklist, they provide you with a checklist and you should, of course, provide every single document that has been mentioned in the checklist in order to be selected. Um, yeah, but uh, I think 
we were also um, very much, when we got here, after we got the scholarship in Germany, uh, we recently met the GAAG scholarship representative and she really highlighted on the importance of the motivation letter along with all the other documents. You really should mention, just like Hajra mentioned, your personal motivation behind applying to this scholarship, your professional career, um, uh, your, your academic path, everything should be highlighted. In, yeah, so everything helps and um, the motivation letter is very, very, very important. Um, and the GAD scholarship representative will read it, the representatives of your future university will read it, and it will tell them so much about you as a person since they don't know you in person, but your motivation letter will tell them everything they need to know about you, yeah? So give it um, a lot of importance. Uh, that's all I wanted to say, and thank you so much, Hesra and Taymor, for this session. And thank best of so luck to everyone. Thank you for adding uh, to our conversation. And yeah, I think um, the most important point that she highlighted again is that the letter of motivation is is the reason why they want to, you know, like they would go through your whole profile. And it's like a shortest way of them knowing what you're standing on and what your profile is all about. So this is one of the most important points that you should talk about, uh, like you should more focus on. Uh, thank you so much, Hajra. Thank you so much, Lena, for adding on that and providing some more information regarding the candidates who already got the masters on them. Uh, now, moving toward the next group for joining us today, it was a really, really wonderful session uh, delivered by Hajra. Thank you so much, Hajra, for your precious time on the Sundays, mostly on the weekends. Okay, so we are not able to listen to the Adil Saab query. Uh, we can carry on with them on another. So thank you so much, each and everyone. Aap logo ne join kya. I hope ki aap ko ye session bho zada pasand aaya hoga. Or if you have any feedback and you are connected with Hajra on social media, then do provide your comments on that. And if we can continue this series of session on other as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Tamu. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.